for Tolkien lovers. Any celebration of his life and work is an eagerly awaited event. No one, of course, is capable of telling the definitive story, for that is known only by those who have lived it. So we must not be overcritical of well-intentioned attempts to do so. Those who have reviewed the film so far have not been particularly impressed. This is the first film to be released by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures under the recently acquired Fox Searchlight Pictures banner and one wonders if on some level sophisticated reviewers cannot quite bring themselves to endorse this first offering. The film has not been endorsed by the Tolkien family estate either, but neither was the Peter Jackson trilogy of Lord of the Rings. Be all this as it may be, I personally found it lovely, even whilst being aware that Tolkien himself was always at pains to spell out that his work was not allegorical in any way. Fairy is an altogether different realm, he told us, and as independent and remote from the everyday as it is possible to be. He was absolutely clear that he was recording rather than inventing his tales. The characters and themes were not concocted, nor were they mirrors of his personal experiences transposed onto a mythological landscape. It was his genuine humility that no doubt facilitated his entry into the realm of fairy, and his genius that enabled him to render it into literary form. This being said, a writer's personal experience of darkness, of falling into shadow, as it were, of losing one's parents as a child, of coming so very close to death, and perhaps experiencing a kind of death of one's former self, which one imagines is often the inner reality of war, is where the self can either be built or destroyed and in this sense can facilitate the necessary empathy for understanding one's story's characters as they experience their own dark nights of the soul. The filmmakers, we are told, were terribly hamstrung by their inability to reference scenes from previous films, their copyright being held by Warner Brothers, so their allusions to beloved scenes in the interlacing of Tolkien's actual life with his stories were weaker than might have been, and perhaps a little clumsy even in places. However, if one knows the work from the books and is not fixated with the Peter Jackson rendering, one can fill in all the gaps quite adequately, as one clearly does when reading, and sometimes what is not rendered visually can be more powerful, more intimate. This is primarily a film about relationships, a period drama, if you like, about Tolkien's early life, the inspiration of his mother, his early friendship bonds, his love of antique languages, and his relationship with Edith, who was to become his wife and lifelong companion. And this tale is told most beautifully. To my mind, Nicholas Holt and Lily Collins are very well cast. 
there is a sincerity to Holt's performance, so very reminiscent of what one imagines the great man to have been like in real life. The kind of man who for over 20 years pretended to be Father Christmas and sent letters to his children every year from the North Pole, regaling them with painstakingly illustrated tales of polar bears and the like, set against remote snow-clad mountains and the spectacular northern lights. This was a man who in a very real sense, like his character Frodo, was capable of carrying the ring against all odds of vanity and hubris, in spite of his obvious genius. And this was a man who wholeheartedly fell in love and remained so for the rest of his life. Both orphans living in the same lodgings as teenagers, they had shared an immediate intimacy, and even though their relationship was forbidden by Tolkien's guardian, the two held fast to their feelings and married shortly after Tolkien graduated from Oxford. It was Edith who nursed him back to health when he returned with trench fever from World War I, and some say it was she who inspired the writing of Luthien as she danced in a hemlock glade during his convalescence. A scene romantically recreated for the film. Those who know the story of Beren and Luthien will understand the significance of the illusion. Those who have studied the great man's life by heart, as it were, will know too the significance of the illusion in his personal and married life. She was always my elven princess, he wrote to his sons after her death in 1971, and she knew it. There are numerous ways to tell a story. Some are simple and wholesome for a mainstream audience, with a great dollop of quintessentially English beauty and romance, like a merchant ivory film might deliver. And sometimes this is just what is needed. <laughs> 